clan and a village that mean nothing to destiny. So much more that when he was born, and when he was announced to one of the disciples, he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? For you to know how much that, fam that clan is so, you know, turning down. It's like in the midst of Ibus in Nigeria. He was from the family they call Osu. Because other Ibus believe that if you're an Osu, if you tell your father you want to marry an Osu, in the past, it can lead you to being excommunicated from Commonwealth of Iboland. They have them also in various cultures in the past. But thank God for now that human rights has helped us. And the one that human rights did not say, we grab the right by ourselves. But Jesus was born at such a complicated time that his family and his, his clan and tribe is nothing. But how did Jesus, and upon this Jesus is the prophecy of Messiah. The one who will rule over the kingdom of the earth. How did Jesus from nothing come to the highest peak that no man under heaven, no man have existed under heaven, that they wrote so many books about him like the one they wrote about Jesus. That Jesus is spoken about almost in every religion. Whereas those religions, the Bible didn't talk about them. One of them is Islam. He's spoken about as being the highest honored by God in Quran. Quran said that Jesus obtained the highest honor on earth and in the world to come. He's the only prophet. My father was chief imam. I have my Quran in my office there from Al Yusuf. Hindus talk about him. I come from a tribe of Yoruba in Nigeria. The Yoruba people in their idol worshiping, I think after India, in idol worshiping, Yoruba is the next one. I'm telling you what I know. But nevertheless, Yoruba people in their own religion call Jesus Christ Afuakweleoriadetu, Prince of Peace. Their idol told them that Jesus is Prince of Peace. They referred to him in name as Ella, but in title as Afuakweleoria Detu. My father was a high priest of Satan before he was converted. As my mother, Kuburat Rabbi Atweweje, was a daughter of the first chief imam of Abulefo. Now can I say something to you? How did Jesus being born in such a daily family become the greatest on earth that every religion is talking about him? And that is the secret we're looking into. We looked last at the word, the word of God. And how the word of God was instrumental to guide Jesus through every storm of life. I will look at the book of Luke chapter, chapter 3 and chapter 4. When he began his journey after baptism to um, get to, to um, a mount of temptation where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then we saw how he came down after the fasting, the first one that appeared to him was Satan, who tempted him. And we discovered that each temptation of Jesus, he overcame by the word. And then, fast 14 says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, and the news of him spread. Don't forget, I looked into this in looking at your destiny. The reason why a lot of Christians struggle with destiny is because they cannot work in parallel with Christ. They do not identify, they do not understand the key that brought Christ to the heights. And so when you do things in your own way, you struggle, you only get your own blessing. 
But when you do things in Christ's way, you will not struggle for you to be successful. You will only do what is necessary for a Christian to do or a human to do. Then you will attract grace of God that make it rich. You cannot be hindered by any mortal man or any spirit or any demon. It does not matter what a witch did. It does not matter what a group said. Whatever name or brand they call themselves. If you can understand how Christ made it and you follow Christ in the word, Jesus obeyed the word of God. I think Jesus says something very spectacular before I move you now into prayer. Because I promise you when I come next, I will talk to you about the prayer life of Christ. And uh, I was in Ireland when I saw Pastor, uh, Be uh, Pastor Ben came up and all the scriptures I wrote down, he quoted them when he was speaking to you. But I was in Ireland. I never shared my, my sermon notes with him. Nevertheless, I need to remind you of the word. If you look at the book of John, chapter 5, verse 19, let's see how Jesus expressed that key. We're going to read it together, please, shall we? But if you look at this scripture, it is a dictum or a reference point. Jesus said, for me, Jesus, I lost my mind to adopt the mind of God. Any thought that comes to my mind, if it is not God or in line with God, it doesn't pass through into my heart to form a decision. I can hear what people say. I can hear peer pressure. I can hear what the government say. However, if anything I hear in my ears that goes to my mind, when it, by the time it comes to my mind for reasoning, and it's not in conformity with the word of God, it doesn't pass into my heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what I say out of my mouth is so instrumental to what become of me. So Jesus does not do what he thinks. He does what the Father has said. He does not think about whether it will, it will be accepted by people or not. He just does it. Even when people, majority, deviate from it, he remains just in the word of the Father. Come on now. If you hear God or submit to God in all your thoughts, tell me, will you have one regret? Come on now. Some people are in a company and the company is shaky as if the company will go bankrupt. They quickly jump off the boats and look for somewhere to hang. But because the situation looks tense, they can only hang on a smaller job, which promises them stability. And the moment they jump, in the company they were, they stabilized and they promoted their junior to become a director, which will have been them. And then where they are, began to have storm and eventually collapse. The difference between them and the one who waited, one was directed by God's spirit, the other one was directed by sight. Am I talking to you? Yes, we have testimony of that sitting among you here right now. Who had two companies offered him job, and God said, take the one that offered you the lower salary. Because in the other one, there will be storm. But one who has the last salary, in a short time, you will be promoted. And you will earn a lot more than what it will give you. And he did. It is stupid to say to someone, to not take higher salary. He did. Within a period of one year, 
it was a different story. He was able to stand with those who, who make policies and decisions in the nation by where he went, only because he, somebody had God and told him. Hearing God and acting on God's instruction is the first pedestal of Christ. And that is the key to all prayers. If you want your prayers, be answered. Your ability to hear and submit to God. Whatever age you are, Samuel was 13 when he submitted to the counsel of God. He had the audible voice of God. Uzziah was, was 16 when he had the voice of God. And he submitted to the counsel of God. I was reading about Joseph yesterday, really Joseph, the son of Asa. He did what was right in the sight of God because he followed his father Asa. And Jehoshaphat is one of the ones we are going to look at this morning. I want to know that the Bible was written to tell us the life of those who followed God, those who obeyed, and they got result, and those who disobeyed, and they were crushed in life. Though they had potentials, but they did not make it. Okay? But now, the lives of those people in the Bible was written so that we who are now coming up can have learning that it's either you do it God's way and you get the result, or you do it your own way, it's temporary. Any result you get is temporary. When the storm shall come and the rain falls, the house will fall flat that is not built on God. Because everybody must pass through testing time. It is the word of God that can sustain you. You know, many Christians have fears, isn't it? Fear of man, fear of Satan. Even they fear Satan more than they fear God. Because anything that happened to them, their vision they hear is Satan did it, Satan did it, demon did it, demon did that, demon. To the extent that they don't even know that angels are working at all. And then they want to hear God and see angels. You can't see angels because your mind is full of demons. Am I talking to you now? <laughs> Listen to me, therefore. It is because they, have, they do not have the knowledge of the word of God. They do not have the knowledge of the word of God. Some people hear the word of God and they try to moderate it. They'll give you their own interpretation of the word. Come on, I'm saying this to you because I want to take you to prayer. You must settle with me today that any ideology that is contrary to the word written, the Bible, you garbage it. Do we agree? Say amen. amen. Then I can talk to you. Let me talk about you. If you are born again, who are you? Sons of God. It means that when you are born again, you are born of God. Correct? Yes, sir. And the book of False John says, whoever is born of God, what? Overcomes the world. These are victory that overcome the world, even our faith. So the first thing is that, why do you fear? Why do you fear? You fear no man, you fear no devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at Isaiah 54. Read verse 15 together with me, please. Shall we? Put it on the board. Read it together. If anyone does attack you, you will not be my dream. Who said that? When? Now. I can hear you. Now. Who is he speaking to? Me. Now read it again. Let's read it together. If anyone does. Who said it? Who said it? Hear you straight loud. Come on, I want to hear you from back there. Who said this statement? Who said it? To who? When? Because with your mouth you read it. So why do you have afraid of attacker? Why do you have to do many prayers over those who attack you? Leave them alone. Stop praying. Don't waste your saliva for those who attack you. 
Because the command of God is that if anybody attacks you, it's not me who sent them. And because I didn't send them, they will surrender. They will surrender. I will show you a friend when they attacked him, what God told him. Let's look together very straight away into the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20. I'm talking about the prayer lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Second Timothy, uh, Second Chronicles 20. It says, after this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Munites came to make war with who? With who? Say loud. So three nations came against one nation. Each of the nations are more populous than Israel. So they have an army that is invading them more than three times their number. So he says, a man came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazan Tama, that is En Gedi. All of you who were with me to Jerusalem, you will remember En Gedi. We, we, we got there. So they have already entered into Israel, surrounded the king. Now, I want you to watch this. Verse 3 says, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to do what? Shall we read it together? Listen to me. Though the man was alarmed because he did not, he slept yesterday in peace. He did not have any altercation with these kingdoms. He did not know that they had been plotting against him. Maybe because Jehoshaphat, if you know the personality of Jehoshaphat, he was a man who just do good to everybody. He's live and let's live. He was a peaceful man. That's why he's alarmed. Probably he spoke to the king of uh, Ammon just a few, few days ago, but you are playing against him. I'm saying that in relation to people who plot against you. It may be in the office, it may be in business, it may be anything. It may be spiritual. You were not, you were not there, they were, they were talking about you. You were not there. It could be that somebody is talking against you, just trying to incite other friends against you. Look, I beg you, never reply when those things come to light. If you reply, you will withdraw the hand of God straight away. And this is the mistake many people make. You go to some churches, they have night vigil. Every prayer is about the enemy who did not want you to remove your leg. The one who did not is holding your neck. The enemy who is holding this, the enemy who is doing that. Is it all the prayers, enemy, 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 enemy. They have no knowledge of God. That's why in places like that, people never succeed. If they have a success, it will be with sorrow added. Always fearful. All manners of nightmares will afflict their brain because their mind has been polluted by information of man, not the word of the living God. They don't know what to do. The Bible says when this man was alarmed, though he didn't have Holy Spirit, are you with me now? Yes, Remember, you said I didn't have Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And you have Holy Spirit, don't you? Yes, Come on, I can't say I can't hear you say. Yes. When I talk to you and ask questions, answer me. Because if you don't answer me, you prolong my preaching time. And I don't want to be long. Because on Friday we were here for four hours plus before the Lord. And hot from beginning to the end. Yes, that was a joke. Let me tell you something that happened to me on Friday. I was standing over there about three and a half hours and the choir was behind me. And at that time, I have stood for about three and a half hours. You know, when you stand in presence of people and you are releasing unction of God, it's, it's, it uh, drains your body. So my body was drained and I was having pain here while I was still speaking because I stood for too long, you know. Sometimes I forget that my body is aging you know, inside me is a young boy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Ghost come upon me, I'm boyish, man. 
I will fly. And you all these young guys, I will dust you. If they put, if they put, maybe I need to come and run with you. When is your youth convention? By the way, it's August, isn't it? The people who came, the, the youth who came from Birmingham, are they still here? They've gone back. Yes. So I'm going to rain, I'm going to run you guys. We we'll go on on the on the race and we we'll run. Um, is it 440 they call it? Get that. 440. No, 100 meters. 100 meters. Okay, we we'll run. 100 meters. <laughs> I would dose you. But you see, what happened is that my body is, you know, only God can tell about that. And I had pain here. And as I had pain here, somebody walked to me on this stage. Come, bro. Turn your back. And he put his hand here. He did not touch me like this. He did. And I looked back. He was an angel of the Lord. And his hand continued to press that back until, I don't know, whether the muzzle was released from trap, being trapped or whether the bone moved, the pain vanished. And then strength came onto me again. And that's the reason why I was able to continue in the same temple, even higher, go and watch that, that video. I went straight into prophetic because every time, remember, he that lives in you is with you. So when you have situations of life and you are mourning, you disappoint God. You are running helter skelter to one prophet, to one apostle, to one pastor. You deny God of his sovereignty. That's why you don't have results, some of you who do that. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run carry under Sabahai. And they are what? Saved. They are saved. Listen to me. My friend Jehoshaphat, he decided to call a fast. He first of all, the Bible says that he, he, he inquired of the Lord. He turned to the Lord. I think within this next month we are going into, I will talk a lot about that as we finish our lecture on the Holy Spirit on Friday Overcomers. So, he inquired of the Lord. Now it says in verse 4, shall we read it together, please? The people of Judah came together to seek help from who? Is it from pastor? From prophet? From apostle? Come on now. From the Lord of us. They turned their prayer to heaven. They recognized their most venomous weapon. It's their mouth. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue in your mouth. <coughs> they turn to what? Seek God. They turn their face to seek God. Christ with Tabernacle, hear my word. They got it from Jesus. They, they turn their face to seek God. Look at Matthew 7:7. 7, 7. Where did you get it from? Shall we read it together, please? The next verse. Read it again. Everyone. That verse 8. Read it one more time. Do you see Satan in the midst of this? Is it written that Satan can stop the door? Did you see that Satan can stop a person who seeks God from finding him? Did you read in my Bible that Satan can stop your prayer? No, some people say that when they, they, Daniel was praying, 
You know, the prince of Persia stopped the angel. Yes? Yes. Are you Daniel? Excuse me. <laughs> Even if your name is Daniel, like Elder Daniel. <laughs> His own Daniel is not the Daniel of the Bible. This Daniel, Jesus said, among all men born of women, including Daniel, no one is as high as John the Baptist. He said, but the least in the kingdom of God is even higher. Excuse me, somebody. Elijah that caught fire, the Bible says you are higher than him. Moses that parted Red Sea, Jesus himself said you are higher. He said, no, 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 not those of you are matured, but the one who just got saved today. Do you know why? Holy Spirit did not live in Abraham. Holy Spirit did not live in David. Holy Spirit did not live in Moses. Holy Spirit did not live in Elijah, even in John. That's why John said, the one who come after me is mightier than I. He will baptize you with Holy Ghost and what? Fire! Fire, fire. He says, I baptize you with water to reveal him. But when he comes, he will baptize you with what? Holy Ghost that comes with fire. It comes with power. It comes with fire. At that time, the dwelling of God will be inside man. Everyone, every demon of hell, the creator of the demons, live inside you, Christian, my friend. He live inside you. So are you afraid? Change your mind. Come on, let me help you know this too. Jesus is always perfectly correct when he releases his dictum. The angel could stop the prayer of Daniel because the name Jesus had not been given. So after our, his generation, our generation, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. And knock, the door shall be open. It's that because anybody who has an attitude of asking God will always receive from God. Anybody who has the attitude of seeking God will always find.